Good morning, everyone. Um, it's already three minutes after nine. I think we should start. The room is not packed, but there is there are some people in. I think it's because the room is quite big. We could have had a smaller one. So, um, if you don't mind, my name is Andra Hoferichter. Um, I will be chairing that meeting. Avri Doria uh, on my left will will take notes of the meeting in order to write a report. Um, but before we start, I would like to invite those people in the room for a quick tour de table. table. Uh, just say your name, um, your country, and if to which school you are connected to or uh, what is your interest in, in this meeting. And um, if you don't mind, can we start with the gentleman over there? Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Claudio Lucena. I'm coming from Paraíba State University in Brazil and Foundation for Science and Technology in Portugal, and I'm also part of the recently launched Center for High Studies in Public Policy and Governance in Brazil in the university, and we're uh, starting a uh, research line on internet governance, so that's, that's pretty much the reason I'm here with you today. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Dr. Govind from Delhi. I'm a de the ISOC uh, India Delhi chapter president, and also, I am in SIG, the Indian School of Internet Governance, where we are spearheading, and we had a three meet, uh, schools. The last one added in Delhi, and the previous two were in Hyderabad and Trivandrum. So we are all working toward the open internet and those kind of things. Good morning. My name is Harput Glazer. I am the Executive Secretary of the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee, and we organize as the Brazilian Steering Committee, the Brazilian uh, School of Internet Governance. Uh, we have two or three versions. One is a full week, and then we have two smaller, only uh, for uh, ju uh, judges and for lawyers. And now a new model is coming uh, only for uh, prosecutors. So we are trying to adapt our school for different clients. Good morning, everybody. My name is Wolfgang Kleinwächter, and I'm one of the fathers of the whole concept of the summer schools. And the background story is that I was a member of the United Nations Working Group on Internet Governance in 2004 and 2005. And during, we had four or five academic members in this group, and we were approached by a number of governmental representatives, but also from business and other constituencies, where we can study internet governance. And the answer was nowhere, because the university life is organized around disciplines and faculties, and internet governance is a little bit uh, informatics, a little bit law, a little bit political science, a little bit economics, so it's, it's a multidisciplinary phenomenon. And so the conclusion was, you know, then we have to develop an own curriculum, and we did this in a workshop in 2006 in Germany and started the pilot project in the small village of Meissen in 2007, and, you know, I'm very happy to see that this Meissen model was copied now around the world, and we have reached now the next level uh, of, you know, coordination and communication among the various schools by uh, moving forward or establishment of the um, Dynamic Coalition on Internet Governance Schools. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Leana Galstian. I'm from the Armenian IGF, uh, the coordinator of that initiative. Uh, we also have the School on Internet Governance. We had two editions, and we're also uh, changing the program. Uh, for the first one, it was uh, for a week in a summer, and it was full of packed. But then uh, this year, we had a program for five months, but it didn't work as well, so it was too long. Now we want to change it again uh, for a smaller period, a uh, shorter period. Uh, we, uh, the School of, of uh, Armenian uh, School on Internet Governance was dedicated for the students yet, but we also think to have a specialized program for journalists and uh, the law enforcement agencies. Uh, so yeah, we will change the program uh, targeted uh, for different interests. Thank you. Uh, I said already my name is Sandra Hoferichter and I'm the coordinator of the European School on Internet Governance. 
Hi, I'm Av Vidoria. I'm from the U.S. I do various things. Um, I've been involved with, with the, the schools, various ones. I think I've taught in four or five of the different ones, but mostly involved with the one, European one in Meissen and the African one. And I've been sort of acting as the secretariat of trying to put this group together over the last year. Yeah, this is Kilnam Chon, uh, APSIG, Asia Pacific School of Internet Governance. Hi, my name is Ariane. I'm a lawyer. I'm from Brazil, and I'm here as a fellow of program Youth, and I participate this year for le of last edition of this school in my country. So I'm so interested to hear about more. Hi, my name is Jonas. I'm from Brazil, also from the youth program, and I, I'm interested in take the, the Internet of Governance School, so I'm here for that. My name is Gustavo Paiva. I am representing my local chapter of the Attorney's Order for Brazil, and I am an alumni from two governance schools, from um, Brazil's steering committee, uh, from their school, and from the South School of Internet Governance. And I'd like to um, increase my knowledge about schools and how to teach internet governance. Thank you very much. I'm Daniel Nangaka from Uganda. And um, previously, I was uh, in the class of uh, Kenya School of Internet Governance. And um, I'm also very happy to share that um, also organizing the Uganda School of Internet Governance in 2019. And um, I'm looking forward to collaborate and seeking your support, such that we can have at least the first school. Yeah, and I think also I'm happy to share that it will be happening right in the week before the Africa Internet Summit. So in case any of the any of you is interested in being among the faculty, I welcome, and we can be able to share more. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Glenn McKnight. I'm from Canada. Um, last few years, the last three years, I've been part of the team with NSIG, with Dr. Kovid and Satish Babu. We did three uh, schools of internet governance and we're doing Calcutta next year. Also, I've been working uh, as a team member of the, with Olga Cavalli for at least three or four times with the uh, Southern School of Internet Governance on our cyber security uh, conference we have done as well. Uh, last year, we did our first North American School of Internet Governance, and it was just three days prior to the ICANN meeting in Puerto Rico. We're in the midst of organizing our next one, which will be again prior to the ICANN meeting, but this time in Montreal. So that uh, if you're coming to the ICANN meeting, make sure you let me know. So uh, the thirdly, I've been uh, I created an online course for IEEE on internet governance. Uh, capitalizing over roughly 300 videos I've shot over the last few years on leaders in the um, uh, ecosystem. Thank you. Um, then we have a new lady arrived just next to the gentleman from Brazil. Would you also introduce yourself? Oh, I'm Vivian Vinagri. I'm from the uh, program Youth uh, from the uh, Comedia Brazil. And um, I think that's it. <laughs> and then let's also go uh, the second row. You're, you should be hidden. Um, the, the lady in with the red. <laughs> okay. Yeah, please start. Marc Le Villion, representing the French organization called Eurolink uh, from the civil society. 
and I have uh, just interest in knowing what's happening here. Thank you. Okay, the next, please. Hello. <coughs> Hello, my name is Melanie Carrer, and I'm a French student in ethics. Uh, Isaac, chapter of France, uh, asked, asked my master to think about a, a, a universal declaration about human rights uh, in this context. Can we go this direction, please, and then finish the round, and then we should stop this first part. Hello, uh, my name is Almudena Fernandez, and I attended uh, EuroCC last summer, which was a really good experience. So um, I'm here to learn more about how it uh, got started and about other initiatives that, like this one. Hello, I'm Rainer Rodewald. I'm from the European Summer School in Meissen. Here. Hello, I'm Jennifer Liu, and I'm an ICT trainee at the Dutch government. I'm working at the Ministry of Education, and uh, I'm also a strategic uh, information policy advisor. Uh, hello, my name is Chiara Illhoff. I'm German and studying in France at the University of Versailles, and I'm here to take notes for the reports. Okay, and then we have the last gentleman at the end of the row. Please, would you introduce yourself? No. Okay. okay. Then let's finish this here, but it gives a good overview who is in the room, and I think we have really a good regional distribution. Um, the uh, core task of today's meeting is to introduce you to a website that has been developed over the last year. Um, taking into account all the uh, proposals and all the discussion that have been taking place over the last year during the IGFs, and which led to that idea to form a dynamic coalition on schools on internet governance. Um, there was a group that believed uh, these schools uh, have a lot to share, as more and more schools are emerging over the globe or, or around the world. Um, there are quite some differences in curricular and the way they uh, focus on uh, special target groups, um, also in the way they are uh, independent, standalone schools, or um, if sometimes they are connected to an ICANN meeting or to an IGF. So there are various forms, and we thought that a dynamic coalition might be uh, a good uh, method or a good uh, platform to create a network of all these schools so that they can first exchange best practice, that uh, this network might also help new schools to emerge. For instance, um, that we offer some uh, guidance how to find uh, global faculty, that we also offer fellows uh, to join that network, which could for some, re uh, for some people even serve as a um, opportunity to um, announce or, or to submit their, which school they have attended and uh, in which field they would like to be active on and that might help uh, future employers to search in that network and find people with uh, key competencies. And then also the idea was that we help schools that uh, have different lengths, some, sometimes it's two days, one day, three days, I think we have all variety of uh, durations, um, that we uh, help those schools to say, okay, if you uh, want to teach internet governance, what do you have to include in your curriculum? If you have only one day, concentrate on X, Y, Z. If you have two days, expand a little bit. And if you have a full week and you might have a regional focus, then here you have some modules that you could choose from. And um, first of all, I would quickly like to walk you through the website that we have set up. It's a very uh, basic website. We did not put a lot of finances and resources in because there there are no financial resources uh, at the moment. So what we did, we took a school, uh, we took a website from the Dynamic Coalition on 
uh, Internet of Things and adapted this to the dynamic coalition of schools on internet governance. And uh, as we move forward, and um, the group is invited, of course, to help developing that website. And this is what, um, what I would like to achieve today, that we look at it first, take it as a draft, and take it from there and develop it jointly. So we registered an URL that uh, was not, we, we didn't have much choice, I must say. Uh, SIG, which is our acronym, was already taken in all the relevant uh, top-level domains, so we thought what might make sense, and uh, we, a small group of uh, representatives from the African, the Brazilian, the European, who, was, who else was the faculty, um, I think that was it, we decided on igschools.net. That uh, should actually show that we would like to create a network and at the moment, uh, you cannot access this site on this URL that will be done after this meeting. Um, if you put slash SIG, then you can browse through that website. So I repeat, it's www.igschools.net slash SIG. And there you can uh, look at the website, the one that is also here visible on the screen. Um, on the entry page, we have a quick overview and also the picture from the founding meeting of uh, last year's and the list of founding members. You will see that we have representation from all stakeholder groups. A lot of them are from the civil society and the academia. Um, we had only two in the room from the business sector, but uh, you can be assured that there are much more uh, supporters from the business sector that uh, actually are supporting the schools on internet governance and also this dynamic coalition. And then from the technical community, we have a variation. You will see ICANN is uh, in that group, RIPE NCC and uh, uh, CGI.br. And also from the government, quite good uh, representation, USA, Egypt and Switzerland. Those were the people that were in that room and that signed up at that time. But um, this should not uh, prevent anyone from, from joining this network, but for the Dynamic Coalition founding, it was important to show this uh, stakeholder uh, diversity and balance. Avri? Yeah. I just wanted to mention that as part of being a Dynamic Coalition, we can and should add more members to this list. This may be the founding list, but it would be good to see the list grow. Absolutely agree to that. Um, so this was the landing page. Um, when, you, when you click on the uh, second tab, DC SIG's meetings at IGF, you will see that we already uploaded the uh, meeting documents from the meeting from the founding meeting that we had last year in Geneva. Our plan is that uh, we meet at least once uh, physically during the IGF, so you will have another meeting each year. But of course, we could also add documents that uh, emerge over the year. We might have uh, virtual meetings, or we might, uh, some groups might use, some sub-working groups might use regional fora to meet, and um, this, can be also, this can also go in here. Um, for you, it might be interesting that, uh, to follow up on uh, last year's meeting. And you will also find here in this respect a session report from the Geneva Internet Platform um, that made an independent report of our meeting as well as the transcript and so on and so forth. Then uh, on the next tab, schools on internet governance. Um, we thought that we would like to show the global uh, variety or the global spread of those schools and uh, included such a map. And at the moment there's, because it's a dummy, only one school is, uh, is marked, which is the European Summer School. But the idea is that we have all the different schools uh, spread on that map. And then when you click on such a school, Rainer is just clicking on it, you will come to a wiki page. And this wiki page should be our uh, collaborative working platform where, um, you will find some basic information about the school. Idea behind is that uh, if a fellow is uh, searching for a school on internet governance, he gets the full 
a variety of schools that are uh, existing and can actually have a very detailed look on uh, what this school offers, how long it is, and so on and so forth. There is a long uh, uh, a questionnaire. Avri will walk us through that questionnaire uh, in a minute. I will just finish uh, walking you through that website. Um, when, if you want to register your school on our website, then um, I said already you can uh, do that via an entry form. This is the one here uh, and that leads, at the moment it's a PDF, once we agreed on those questions, uh, we can offer this also as a formula or as an as a online form to type in. Um, but because it's quite detailed and we wanted to discuss with you if these are the questions we would like to asked uh, the schools who would like to register, um, we will then, once we have agreed this, uh, put that online as a form. Then uh, we also are planning to do a, a table, a, a list, uh, or as an overview in addition to the, to the map with the links where we uh, have a list of, of schools that are existing. And then, as I said already, we would also like to give fellows a chance to um, upload, I would call it upload their curriculum. Please don't be disturbed that these are only uh, testimonials from fellows from the European SIG. This is just a dummy page. We should, of course, include testimonial from across the region and from across the globe. Um, but um, this is how we would propose to uh, have that fellows page that we have some sort of testimonials, maybe some videos also. But then um, there's also a sample uh, form for a um, entry form where we would also like to offer space on the wiki for the fellows where they can actually promote themselves. And as I said already, I think that would be a good opportunity for employers to search in our network of uh, fellows of schools on internet governance and since it is a wiki each fellow can update or can keep that up to date when, uh, when the university or uh, when everything changes in the curricula so that everyone has his wiki page under this network and um, can uh, reach out to or even point instead of a LinkedIn profile can point to uh, our network and say I was attendee in that school and uh, here you can find more about my research project, fellows can link to their uh, master thesis and so on and so forth. I think um, this wiki offers quite a lot of um, opportunities uh, to bring such a network really uh, to life. And then um, the next step is the faculties. Um, we would offer the same that we offer for the fellows also to the faculties. Here again, at the moment, these are faculty members from the European School. Of course, this should be extended to faculty members from uh, around the globe. And this should also help schools to identify faculties so that not only one crowd of people is traveling around the, uh, the world, but that you can identify experts that are existing in your region and that you might invite uh, to your school and they will also get a wiki page where they can update their information and uh, with, where you can, can search. Avri, you have a question? I have a question and I also just want to give an example of stopping you and asking a question. Yes. Um, you're going to have faculty that, that teach in several. I just wanted to check, will this be able to sort of take one faculty member and, and, and have them show how they teach in several? Or is it a faculty per school in terms of its current organization? Um, this is something we could discuss. My idea was, or our idea was, that uh, it is just a pool for faculties across the globe. And if the Asia Pacific School, for instance, decide we want to invite the US government to teach at our school, they should be able to find someone like Fiona um, to, to join the school and um, update them. Okay, so people would be able to list their various schools and, and have it across, that's great, thanks. Exactly, that is the idea. And then the last tab uh, is the curriculum. 
here nothing has been done. I think that is our task for the future to develop jointly a modular curriculum of um, uh, where, two, where, where schools that are emerging or schools that are existing can, uh, can uh, choose from, so to say, okay, I want to, I have only two days, I want to teach the core basics about internet governance, what are the topics? Uh, maybe if you think that further, we could maybe even collaborate with the I Can Learn platform where some presentations are um, listed so that uh, even the presentation and the knowledge that uh, is taught in these schools um, is more or less harmonized and, and the same because uh, a presentation about ICANN will always be the same. So it makes sense to have them stored at some point and uh, that everyone can, can visit them. Last tab is to subscribe. And I will stop here. We'll uh, first invite you for a round of questions and we'll then hand over to Avri to walk us through uh, the big form of, uh, of the schools, the entry form of the schools. But here, um, I've talk, uh, talked enough and asked for your questions or comments. <laughs> Daniel, can I take the floor? Yes, please, of course. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, this is a brilliant idea for this website, and um, I'm happy at least to put in some bit of time based on my skills for website development. So I think we can discuss that. And also another thing is that uh, with the fact that there is rapidly changing uh, knowledge regarding to internet governance, the integration with I Can Learn is really great. but. Uh, yeah can like specific timelines for these respective knowledge bases be created, especially in respect to the curriculum. The good thing is that the curriculum hasn't yet been shared, but uh, if a document eh, of the draft curriculum is shared, then we could probably add in some little bit of input. I think that would be great. Thank you. Farzani? Thank you, Sandra. Uh, Farzani. Farzani, maybe you could introduce yourself. We did all this uh, at the beginning, but you were not in the room at that time. Uh, yes, Farzani by the um, Internet Governance Project. Uh, we are partners with the uh, Middle East School on Internet Governance. And uh, so my question is about the faculty members. When you uh, have the faculty members, do you actually divide them by their stakeholder group as well as their expertise? Um, if, if you do that, that would be really helpful t in order to, uh, if, if, you know, if schools want to invite someone based on their expertise or someone they need to. Um, then the other thing that I thought uh, might be useful, so how are you going to, uh, are you going to gather all the curriculums, curriculums of all the schools and then just put them there, or are you going to just ask someone to um, come up with like an overarching frame for work and have that page populated? Um, on the curriculum, I think since we will link to each school when they filled out the entry form, um, you will find their individual curriculum. Um, we think more about a modular curriculum, a framework that schools can take once they uh, either establish or um, if they want to build their curriculum, um, which should be a recommendation um, if you want to teach internet governance. These are the modules you should definitely include. And so we are thinking more of a framework. But since this uh, page is empty, this is really up to discussion. And um, everyone who would like to join that sub-working group and to uh, develop such a framework curricula is, is really welcome. And on your first question about the uh, faculty, um, if, if it's according to stakeholder group, since it is a wiki, we can introduce various tags. We can tag technical community, government, etc., pp, and could organize the wiki in a way that you can search according to stakeholder group and search according to region. And um, then once you have a list of uh, faculty members, you can go on their page and see what specific expertise they, they have. That's why we choose the wiki as the forum for collaboration and searching. 
if I can add to, you, to your answer a second, sorry, is I think it could also be if we wanted to tag, I mean, because it's really going to be up to, to, to the group of people participating at schools, is tag it with expertise things. If we get to the point of doing a taxonomy of, of expertise, and, and that, that, that could be tagging too. And the only thing I'd like to add on modules is it's not necessarily modules that should be, but that could be. Um, Vinicio? Uh, yeah, this is Diego from uh, the Brazilian Internet Governance School. No problem, Sandra. Um, uh, as Professor Glaser pointed out in the beginning, we have, uh, at this point, two different sorts of courses in the Brazilian Internet Governance School. One longer version of the course, which is a general Internet Governance School course, and we have a shorter version of, of the course, which is aimed at public authorities uh, and, and the judiciary branch, especially for the application of the Brazilian Internet Marco Civil. Uh, and it's a very practical question related to the website. Would there, would there be branches in the Internet Governance School or would we have to uh, put the two different courses? Uh, I, I don't know, I just, I'm just thinking of the structure of the website. If, if you guys are thinking of accommodating different versions of the same Internet Governance School. Thank you very much. That's a very detailed question, and I would not like to answer this uh, entirely, just um, to share some ideas that we had in our brainstorming uh, meeting this year, um, that we could think that we give a color code to the different schools. There are some schools that are more conference type style, some schools that are more a one day capacity building, and other schools that go for a week. So we might introduce a color code and saying, okay, if you look for a school that offers X, Y, Z, you might choose the, the green ones. And if you, but, but this was just an idea. I'm, I'm not saying that this is the way we are going to do this, but this might be one way to address your uh, matter. On the other hand, we can also just mark two dots on the global map and say, okay, in Brazil, there are two schools maybe they shouldn't be too close to each other because you won't see them if the map is uh, is not on Zoom. We can also think about um, the link that goes to your school if, if it makes clear that you have two versions of the school that might also explain it. I think this, here, here we, as we move forward, we will find solutions and we will have to discuss those solutions. I don't have a complete answer or a solution for this. Other questions? Yeah. Satish and, and Farsi. Hmm? Uh, and Adam, okay. Thank you very much. My name is Satish Babu and I come from India and I'm associated with the India School of Internet Governance and the APSIG, which is a group of uh, national SIGs. So uh, apologies for coming late. I had an ISOC meeting, which is why it's delayed. So I missed the early part. So uh, maybe this is a repetition, but uh, uh, this, uh, the format, I think it's a great idea to collect information, uh, baseline information on all the SIGs. Um, uh, what is the kind of dissemination of this information? Uh, who's going to own this information? Uh, and how will people get to use it? So it's broad questions. If you've already uh, ex explained this, we can maybe ignore the question also. I'll talk to my colleagues and find out. Thank you. Um. I kind of touched on this issue, but um, I think it's good that you asked that question again. Um, who owns that information? The net it's a network. So it's a network of schools. I don't think there is ownership. Of course, you have to register the website under a domain, and the domain has to be hosted by someone. Um, last year, during the founding meeting, the group agreed that we uh, the, the European summer school um, is the convener for this draft. We also had a preliminary mailing list that will be closed soon and we will transfer all the uh, names that subscribe to that mailing list to the to the new um, igschools.net uh, URL. So if that is ownership, then probably Medienstadt Leipzig is the owner, but we do not at all intend to have the ownership on the content that is on that website. That should really be a collaborative effort as for any other um, 
um, dynamic coalition. And Rainer and myself, we did a research how other dynamic coalitions are handling this issue with um, who is in the impressum, who is on the website mentioned as the owner. Obviously, in Germany, um, if you register a website that is on a, on a German uh, server or registered in German, they are quite strict. You must have a name, a telephone number, an email on that website so that you can trace who is the owner. On a global level, this is not followed so um, in detail. So there are the DCs that don't have this information, but as we are based in Germany, we must have this information. Otherwise, we get in conflict with the law. Um, this was one. Does this answer your question, or was there another part of your your question, Statish? Uh, did you have any plans on how to disseminate this information? Who is going to consume this information? Um, first and foremost, I think it's uh, for us a collaboration uh, network where we can also search, see how other schools are doing. So, who could uh, benefit from this? First, schools that would like to set up their own school in their own region, they can use that as a resource to build a curriculum, to find a faculty, to get in touch with the network. Secondly, for fellows who are searching, or potential fellows who are searching for a school, they might look what's up in my region, where is the next school happening. Um, we can have a news section, for instance, where we say, okay, the next school on internet governance is taking place uh, in region XYZ from until. This could be an opportunity. And um, then also for employers that are searching in our network for, uh, for employees, basically. Or not only to employ them, but sometimes when uh, people are looking in a project, we need a person that has these competencies where can we find that person? So, the next was Farzani, then Adam, and I see another hand. I'm sorry, I forgot your name, but then the gentleman over there. Ms. Daniel. Okay. Thank you, Sandra Farzani speaking. Uh, so, uh, I don't know if you touched upon this. Uh, are you? Do you have any tab about funding, not to create competition among the schools, but um, one of the well, one of the um, issues that we face is to raise funding for each school, and um, it would be good if we could share that experience now. I don't know how uh, realistic that is, <laughs> because sometimes people don't want to say what source of uh, their funding is so that you don't go and ask uh, the same source. Um, but I think that would be uh, one thing if we can add that somehow like tips about how to get um, funding for the school uh, or like various models. For, for example, Eurasic uh, gets, I think you get a scholarship for, for some of the students, some of the students pay uh, themselves. So it would be good to know how uh, the schools are funded so that not necessarily the source of funding, but how uh, they fund the school. And then, um, uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Oh, yeah, so the other thing was that uh, you mentioned about the fellows, and they could be recruited to, like, for jobs or, you know, positions, and that's a very good point because, you know, for example, for um, IGF secretaria or for uh, internships at various places, I think we can use um, the website for, uh, giving like the fellows a platform uh, to uh, uh, present their expertise. Um, very good question regarding the funding. When we walk through the form, there will be a question how each school is funded. So if you search for a school and then you can see in detail how it's funded, I'm not sure how realistic it is um, to give some general information about the funds, but I did talk to some sponsors over the last years and they actually very much supported uh, such a network because they also say, you know, there are people coming from all over the world saying, I'm doing a school on internet governance, can we have some funds? And for them it's really difficult to, I wouldn't say evaluate, but at least to understand what kind of, uh, how they are going, how they are emerging. And it would then give a little bit more confidence when they are part of this network so that there is some uh, basic information already available for a sponsor and then it would be also easier for them to agree sponsoring a school. 
Regarding the competition, I won't comment on that. Of course, we are all heading to the same companies asking for funds, so this is, this is a tricky issue, but uh, we managed so far, and I'm confident that we will manage in the future as well. Um, Adam and then Barra, and then I think, are there any other questions? Because I would then lose, use the last 15 minutes that Avri walks us to a little one. Okay, so Adam, the gentleman over there, Andrea, and then we finish the queue and we do the last 15 minutes uh, dedicate to the, to the entry form for the schools. Hi, good morning everyone. Um, Adam Peake from ICANN. So there was mention of ICANN Learn and we'd be more than happy to offer that platform um, as a way of particularly, I think, delivering um, basic courses, things that are historical background information and would be consistent across all the schools. Um, there is information there in, uh, already, and the information is being updated. So the courses are, are getting, well, basically they're getting better quality. Um, I know that a lot of people use them as prerequisite preparation materials. Um, there are ways to monitor if a student has taken the course and completed the course, so you can see that they've actually done the preparation before coming to a school. Um, so advice on what should be there, on how to improve what is there, is very welcome from people who are running schools and faculty who are expert in this. And um, generally, we'd be welcome to taking more of your input and putting it on I Can Learn. And I Can Learn is now becoming up to a normal industry standard sort of um, online learning platform. So there are APIs, and you can integrate different bits of material and so on. Um, so that is one thing. Um, going on to really Farzanay's question, I was going to ask something about, uh, for the organizers of schools, how do you feel about the intellectual property that you have in the curriculum in particular that you develop? Um, it is something that has value, and I noticed that a lot of schools do not share beyond the program, um, so you do not see the presentation materials from a lot of schools, and I think that's entirely reasonable. Um, it is intellectual property that belongs in many cases to the specific lecturer who may or may not be professional in what they do, particularly the professionals, the academics may want to retain that intellectual property. And in some ways that relates to the funding model of the different schools and as an organization that occasionally gets involved with funding, but we don't have a particular funding, permanent funding process for schools, um, then understanding the business model and approaches of the different schools would be useful. Um, some look like them, they're almost for-profit, some are most definitely just, um, you know, not-for-profit um, people coming together. So, you know, how are they organized um, would be a very useful piece of information just generally to people I think you're going to for funding. Um, but basically at the moment the I Can Learn platform um, is available for you to use and advice on how we can all use it better. Thank you. Da Daniel, for the record. Um, my question goes into the respective uh, timelines. Uh, what is the respective timeline for creating the respective coalitions? And then um, one of the biggest challenges that uh, the schools face, especially the upcoming schools, is that uh, there is inadequate information regarding to how the school can be organized, despite the fact that we can consult with one or two or three. Probably, um, is, there, is there like a, a currently a, a benchmark or standard that we are looking at for the future implementation of other schools? Thank you. Um, regarding timelines, there, there are no timelines at the moment. We start as a loose network and the, I mean, we can move as fast as this group is willing to move. So there, there is nothing I can, I can enforce in this regard and I, we should not enforce anything. Um, and your second point was regarding the... Uh, uh, just a quick one. Um, because like, since you already started this, I believe that there is uh, probably a stage at which you want to achieve. Do you have like that stage breakdown, despite the fact that there are no respective time timelines? <sighs> yeah. In, in, in other words, I, I'm not sure that I understand your question, but what 
we've got is basically a start. I think our notion is to, as quickly as possible, and certainly within the next year, get as much of this organized, populated, discussed, things added. This is really just a first attempt that's grown from the, the conversations that went on before. Um, we won't get to much of the, the school description thing, but, but we'll see that there we're trying to sort of collect uh, information. And I may just use this as a place to sort of kick off where I was going because I think I may touch on some of the other issues in that, and we only have 10 minutes left. Um, if, we, if we bring up the, 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 the school's form, and I'm not going to go through it in detail, but what you also find in the materials for this, um, for, for this DC meeting and um, such was a Google Drive document that is basically the list of information that was then taken from the entry form of this and perhaps some additional was added. And, and what I did just to give people a, a clue of, of where this started is I, I wandered around the internet to all the schools I could find on the internet, looked at the way they were organized, looked at what they showed in terms of, of, of curricula, looked at that and started to try and build a, t a taxonomy. Because one of the problems that I've certainly had when talking about schools on internet governance is how to describe them. And as, 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 as was said, you know, they're, they're all so different. And, and when you start talking about them, you know, whether it's the days, whether it's the funding model, how it's organized, is it for a specialized group? Is, you know, all of those questions are, are really quite good and they start to form a taxonomy. And so at the moment, that drive document is, is open for everybody to comment on, add, add material to, you know, correct material on, et cetera, because I really would like all of the people that, that are interested in this to look at that taxonomy and add what's missing and, and add what's there. So part of that information will be stuff that would help somebody organize a new school. If you were looking at a new school, you would say, aha, there are schools that fund this way. How do I want to fund? You know, there are schools that have this kind of curriculum. What, what kind of curriculum do we need? There are schools, you know, et cetera. So th that kind of thing. Now, maybe later as a group, and as I say, as, 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 as Sandra was explaining, as a network, we'll sort of figure out as time goes on what the folks in the network want. The fact that it's been put on a wiki, the fact that it's fairly versatile with a fairly, you know, with a very competent, you know, wiki master able to, to, to do magic when we need it, I, I think that we could start to develop a, a rich resource for people that are either starting a new school or are varying their school, they decide they want to add some new courses, they want to add some new ways of doing things. It should be available to, to anyone. I mean, it, it, it's a wiki on, on the internet. It really should be available to anyone that wants to start a school, either has an idea or has no idea. So anyhow, so in going through this, and you'll just see in this entry form, trying, you know, things like uh, is the school global, regional, or national initiative? That was one of the things that we found. For so there's a, there's a difference in schools, whether they're trying to, to, to teach to just a local group, a national group, or, or an international group. Are you targeting one stakeholder? As I was looking through the various schools, I noticed that some were, were meant, as, as you were talking about, legal. You know, some were meant more for an engineer, some were meant for, so, and some were meant just for, you know, wanting a full multi-stakeholder experience. Um, you know, uh, the region, okay, things like funding. Frequency, you know, do you do these yearly? Do you do these monthly? Is this an ongoing program that you have? Duration, we, we already heard today people talking about it's an afternoon, it's a day, it's a three day, it's a week, it's an ongoing program. Um, you know, so, so if, if you look at the document, 
the taxonomy that, that, that I've been preparing and I'm hoping you all add to, you'll find that not only is the question asked, but there's a variety of possible answers that, that, that I've sort of discovered while going through all of your curricula that I could find. Basically, you know, I spent a while just, you know, finding all of your schools and trying to figure out from what was on the web what the possibilities were. So, you know, besides internet governance, are there other subtopics? Some schools have a specialty, you know, whether it's a legal specialty, an engineering specialty, or what have you. Are you associated with other events or processes? Some of them, like the African school, tries to be, um, tries to be attached to the African IGF and then tries to have as part of its training sort of as many of the fellows from the school as possible, then continue the following week at the African IGF. So they pair. Some schools are independent in the middle of the summer. So that if you could move on just, and I mean, I'm quickly hand waving this because we have, but really I, I do hope people, and on the mailing list and wherever, but, but, but the, the URL is in the material that was submitted for this uh, dynamic coalition. Um, can you, sco uh, can you, can you uh, scroll a little since I don't have that? You know, we ask about funding and, and, and you'll see in the, um, in the drive document, various kind of funding models are listed, uh, collecting websites, collecting email addresses. Um, you know, how big are schools? Some are a small 10 to 20 intimate group some are 30, 40, some are 100 to 200. You know, those are different kind of schools. They have different criteria. And, and very much trying in this taxonomy to collect things in a non-prejudicial way. It's not that one size is better than another size, et cetera. It's just there are different ways. And one of the things I don't think we have a, a strong grasp of, I certainly don't have a strong grasp of, of what, what's the variety? You know, how many ways are we creating these schools so that anybody that wants to start one, how many ways do they have? Uh, composition of faculty, are they professional teachers? Are they, you know, are they, are they people that are sent by the companies that sponsor it? Are they hired external? Is it a mix? You know, are they from international organizations or sponsors? Number of faculty, et cetera. Can we scroll some more? And just, as I say, there, there's a lot in this. And then what I think, we, we, once we have this taxon ta taxonomy, and it's a taxonomy that, you know, the people in this network, you all and others, are sort of satisfied with, then we can figure out what, which of the questions are good questions for writing narrative of here are the kinds of schools, here are the ways you can do it, and which are the important ones to collect as we try to document the kinds of schools, the number of schools, the, the what all of, of various schools. I will stop now because there's two minutes and we have to leave, but please find that drive document. As I say, it was on the, um, it was the document listed for this look at this website and, and give suggestions on how to make it better. Because what we have up here is basically the first effort of a very small group of people who have talked to you. And as I said, I've combed through your websites, but I haven't, in fact, I, I took a list of all the various schools people mentioned, and there were a couple I didn't find while I was looking for all. So I have a bunch of schools yet to research. So if that's a quick, 10 minute hand wave. <laughs> Thank you very much, Avri, for walking us through this. I see the time is not enough that we really discuss this form in detail now, but as you said, um, actually I must admit, since I included already the feedback from three different sources, the, uh, the Google Drive that you mentioned is not up to date. Right. It, it needs to be brought to Yes, but what I will do, I will exactly uh, copy paste this uh, uh, content into the Google Drive 
and we will spread that information on the mailing list. And I ask everyone in the room who is interested to work on this dynamic coalition to subscribe to our mailing list and all the information on how to collaborate, how to move forward will come via this mailing list. And of course, we will also uh, offer the basic information on, on this website. At the moment, Rainer is hosting this website. And um, if there is agreement in this room that AFRI remains our point of contact for the dyna dynamic coalition, but these are also things um, that we can continue discussing on the mailing list. And um, I will please use that week to subscribe to the mailing list and uh, we will then continue with the work thereafter. But Andrea, um, we cut your intervention and uh, with this I give you the last word, you have two minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra. I, actually, it was just a question. It was, um, be, did you reach out already to university networks? And I came, I came late um, um, to, the, to the session, so you may touch this already. Um, since we have some faculty members that are of academic nature, they are connected to uh, universities, and uh, this is at the moment our, our arm into universities. But I know you organized recently a school in collaboration with the Barcelona University and if you could join that network and bring on those people that would be really much uh, very much appreciated because I really think we can collaborate and also learn with universities. Thank you. So if there are no other urgent you have to uh, I have to leave sharp at 10 so I can leave the mic open and but Liana and then Wolfgang you have the last very short word. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to ask, do we, um, when the network is established and there's a subscription, a mailing list, etc., will we have some uh, um, meetings, uh, like conference calls, etc., so that you continue this work throughout the year, not to have only once in a year, face-to-face uh, -face meeting? As I said, definitely one face-to-face -face during the IGF, possibly virtual meetings, and if it makes sense, regional meetings. Yeah. Wolfgang? Just to reply to Andrea, you know, the uh, founding of the summer school goes back to a workshop where we created also GIGANET, the, the Global Internet Governance Academic Network. By the way, they have their workshop on Thursday here in Paris at the Sorbonne, and I think this is the best uh, contact point if you want to involve academics in the faculty to do it via GIGANET. Okay. Thank you very much. I thank you for your attendance and for your active participation and I look forward to continuing on the mailing list um, and make this network alive. Um, this meeting is adjourned. See you.